Welcome to Dominations. My name is Mark. Today it's time for another episode of the Assessment Center. In Assessment Center attacks, I am focusing for World War attacks of uh, players who are friends of mine or who sended me some of their video footage. So it's all about uh, interesting, probably alternative attack strategies, which I personally consider important or interesting to take a closer view at. Uh, probably assessing what is or what has run pretty good in those attacks and what is being able to being improved. So far, all of this assessment center videos have not met or received a lot of interest from my English uh, community site or from my English viewers and therefore I produce them mainly in German. Uh, that's my last test to see whether uh, you, the English speaking part of the community or mostly English-speaking part of the community has some interest for those assessment center attacks. Otherwise, I will just only record them in German due to the fact that I want simply to fit my content to you, the viewers, and obviously what is not interesting you, I do not have to record. <laughs> the actual attack is conducted by a friend of mine, Sandman, thanks for providing the video footage. He has activated a level 8 Offense Collision Ethiopians as well as level 8 Americans uh, offense collision. The enemy has activated level 8 uh, Russians defense collision, as well as level 7 Egyptians collision. Uh, nevertheless, what is pretty important to mention sideways, the uh, equipped museum, which is pretty specially equipped, but even more important, the university, which is nearly completely uh, researched. So all research is in, in the university are done, which are defensively uh, related. Only about uh, 43 researchers missing and all important ones, uh, I don't know, Hannibal Barkas, Hold the Gates, Capstone from, uh, I think it's S Sultan Saladin, uh, Harriet Tubman, Capstone with uh, the uh, shooter spawning buildings, all are completely done. In total, the attack base is only level 268 and it does not seem like a lot, but actually, if you are considering the, imp the information I uh, provided you with, this base is definitely way much tougher than uh, it looks like. So the attacking player is attacking with uh, a combination of heavy tanks and uh, bombers. So, okay, interesting. The first uh, units to call in into the battle are some troop tactics. I think these are zero planes from the dock. So they are pretty wasty and you're getting a lot of them, but nevertheless, they are pretty fast and you can use them as some kind of bait to activate enemy SAM batteries and make sure that your valuable troops, such as the bombers in this case, are not getting damaged by them. Yeah, they are pretty fast dead. Okay, we have seen a sabotage tactic over here. Uh, the sense of sabotaging the air defense is pretty obvious, but the bunker is not that smart, I think. Probably he would have run better by sabotaging the uh, air defense as well as the tower, but hitting the exact point, probably he was too nervous to do this, but he would have been definitely able to sabotage both buildings within, uh, or with only one sabotage tactic. Yeah, he has four bombers with him, so probably I would have also tried to call in two of the bombers for both of those towers to not have them shooting all of the time and the two other bombers like he did for the Forbidden City as well as the um, rocket arsenal due to the fact that it was obvious that the bombers will, two of them at least, will come in from the um, embassy side due to the fact that the complete area of the map can be divided up into four uh, triangles. I have also another video on this and I'm pretty sure Stepmaster also did this. This is some kind of common sense. Uh, nevertheless, I want to mention it for probably new players. So what you see over here is just only an example. You can divide up the complete area of a base, <coughs> of each base, no matter whether the forest is cleared or whether the forest is not cleared. There is an area which is um, a square and the square is just like, the square is being able to uh, being splitted up into four triangles. And those triangles 
are uh, deciding from which direction your planes are incoming if you are attacking. So if you are hitting a building um, at a place which is inside of one of those triangles, the planes which will income, except for the tactical helicopter, but the tactical helicopter is a barracks troop and so it's not an airstrip troop. So all airstrip units will come in from that kind of from that edge of a base in which triangle the connected building is. So let's only make an example. If you would hit the bunker or the air defense, you, we can see right over here, all planes, um, all air units from the uh, airstrip would come in from the embassy side to attack them. If you would hit the town center, uh, the castle or this air defense, probably all air units to attack those buildings, which you tagged, uh, would come in from the embassy side. So I think it would be smarter to have called in two uh, bombers to those both towers to get them destroyed. And then the other bombers for the Forbidden City as well as the rocket arsenal afterwards. Okay, that bomber one was pretty good. Um, he killed both of the cannon towers with just only one bombing run. Yeah, okay, he's obviously focusing, focusing for the town center, so not getting the uh, quick victory uh, win by 50%, but getting it by destroying both town centers. He also dropped both of his uh, generals with his troops, so his complete main force from the opposite side of the embassy. Yeah, I think the healing tactic was also pretty sensible. His troops were, were low on health, only 50%, some of them. Hopefully the uh, background music is not too loud, the effects. Yeah, again, that was a pretty dope use of his bombers. I mean, obviously, his... Uh, Troops and his so his heavy tanks are pretty vulnerable to the enemy anti-tank guns. The enemy anti-tank guns are located in the very center of the base, so strategically and inside of uh, the bastions, which is also nasty to attack with heavy tanks. And he called him his bombers, and his bombers just attacked from that side, where they are able to kill two of the three remaining uh, anti-tank guns with only one bombing, right? Unfortunately, he lost both of his bombers, I see. Okay, he used some Urumi or some... No, these are not Urumi. It's another troop tactic. Uh, yeah, I forgot the name. Also his uh, coalition troops. And now his troops are splitting up. So rallying is not a good option now over here. Otherwise, he will not get enough stars because the troops are too bunched up at one place. Alliance troops, some uh, bazookas, but the time is getting pretty close, so he does not have a lot of time. Yeah, actually in the end it did not, uh, it wasn't enough for five stars. Nevertheless, it was a question of time and not a question of condition, so he did not fail, he was simply too slow and probably did not locate his troops at the very right place. Let's jump back to some of the key moments, I think. One key moment to me definitely was calling in the troop tactics pretty early on to get, I mean, at least only one of the uh, air dis um, defense traps of the SAM batteries triggered, but nevertheless, he could trigger one of them. The second key moment, uh, which is a negative one for me, was sabotaging the air defense, which was pretty good, obviously, but uh, if he would have used the sabotage for the tower as well as air defense, it would definitely be more efficient in this uh, moment. Third key moment, calling in two of his four bombers for the Forbidden City as well as the uh, uh, rocket arsenal. Uh, it would be better to call in four of them and also for the towers to get at least less damage to all of his bombers. Yeah, now they are taking a lot of damage especially the bomber which is coming from the Alliance Gate side. Uh, embassy side, I meant. Embassy side, sorry. 
Next key moment I think was using in his bombers, but he used both of them and lost them. Nevertheless, he was able to get rid of both cannon towers in the very center. At least I think he would have gotten, or he would have got some uh, additional valuable minutes or seconds if he would de uh, not have deployed his um, alliance troops at the uh, I don't know 11 o'clock position but more about the uh, 10 o'clock position but more about the 11 or 12 o'clock position to the uh, pentagon because uh, probably he would have gotten for 100% nevertheless it would have been a close battle uh, in total I can say it's a pretty interesting strategy to attack uh, with heavy tanks and bombers so far I haven't done probably I uh, will use or I will try it in the future but so far I have to to do some research for my bombers they are pretty low now uh, in some, I think this was a pretty dope and straight attack, uh, especially if you consider the high amount of university research in the background. So if you are planning an attack with transporters or bombers, so having a primary focus in an attack, in a World War attack for your ass strip uh, troops, definitely make sure which steps you are taking into the mid or the very early section of the battle due to the fact that a lot of enemy buildings will stay will still be active and shooting your air defense troops and you can make a lot right in the very initial part of an attack but you can do also a lot wrong if you are probably clicking at a wrong building or um, estimating uh, a wrong direction from your planes to approach the enemy base and then having all of your planes probably flying above some towers and air defenses whereby you have anticipated them to come from a completely other side. So if you want to make it really right and to be dedicated about an attack where you are probably unsecure and not uh, completely sure about um, being able to destroy the enemy without any problems, I can always recommend to you uh, take a screenshot and a screenshot from the most extern position. So get as much uh, space of the enemy base as possible at your screenshot and then use some kind of picture editing program to uh, mark the complete area of the enemy base inclusive the not um, cleared forests such as I uh, did over here and then sign in uh, the cross from the very 12 o'clock to the uh, six o'clock position so one line from uh, one vertical line um, from the sent from the mid top corner to the bottom top corner to the uh, mid bottom corner and from the left corner to the right corner and horizontal line and you will be pretty pretty exactly able to forecast uh, from where your air troops will approach the enemy base um, when you hit a specific building. In some cases, you are even able, like the rocket arsenal in this case, that you have buildings which are including different sectors. So if you are hitting the ar rocket arsenal more to the um, northwestern side, the uh, regarding or related air troop will approach the enemy base from the alliance gate and if you will hit it more to the northeastern side the uh, transporter bomber or plane whatever will approach the enemy base from the embassy side so the more buildings are located to the very center of the enemy base be careful um, because planes can approach the base from different sides for the same building so that's about the assessment center episode today hopefully it was interesting uh, for you, we'll see us soon. Your domination tips.